Here is 1943's Lincoln sent in MS-68 condition. According to NGC, of the three steel sent issues, the San Francisco Mint edition is slightly scarcer than the others, but it is certainly not rare. Collectors should use care in selecting just the right coin, as steel sense had striking issues that were seemingly unique to this composition. Among the problem areas is the final numeral of the date, which is often weak or even filled in altogether. This wartime steel penny ended up selling for $1,440. Number 16. This is 1969 D. Lincoln sent in Mint State 65 Red. Although uncirculated, it's not the high-end grade, or condition rarity for the issue. So what makes this scent so valuable then? It's highly elusive coin because of missing initials of the engraver on the reverse, to the right of memorial. Otherwise called no FG scent. This error scent was sold for $505.25. Number 15. Here is 2005 Lincoln scent with satin finish. Graded as MS-70 red by PCGS. Representative of absolute numismatic perfection, with no blemishes or contact marks whatsoever. The hairline crossing over the bow tie is on the window of the slab not the coins itself. This ultimate gem ended up selling for $1,920. Number 14. This is 1966 Kennedy Half Dollar from Special Mint Set. Otherwise called SMS Half Dollar. This collectible 50 cent piece comes with missing engraver's initials as well. There is no sign of FG on the reverse. Graded as SP67 by PCGS this exquisite half ended up selling for $2,820. Number 13. This is 1996 Lincoln cent struck on a 1996 P. Roosevelt dime planchet. Graded in mint state 67 by NGC. Obverse die struck reverse of the dime and reverse die vice versa. This double denomination coin ended up selling for $4,080. Number 12. Here is 2000p Sacagawea dollar struck multiple times. Third and fourth strikes 50% off center. Graded as MS64 by PCGS. According to Heritage, the first strike was normal, but the piece failed to eject and instead rotated a few degrees clockwise before its second strike. The coin was then only partially ejected, and was struck a third time, widely off-center toward 8 o'clock, and at 8 o'clock relative to the first two strikes. The fourth and final strike was in a similar position but shifted slightly southward. Four dates and mint marks are visible, although the date from the third strike is faint. Lustrous and cup-shaped with attractive orange, rose, and ice-blue toning. It was sold for $4,887.50. Number 11. This is 1999 P. Jefferson Nickel in MS-68 condition with full steps. Registry set collectors actively pursue superb gem examples of this issue, although the present piece is in a class by itself. This 1999 P. Nickel is the single finest certified at PCGS. The strike is needle sharp, and the radiant surfaces yield a hint of champagne toning. It was sold for $4,465. Number 10. Here is 1998 S. Lincoln sent proof with close AM graded as PR70 deep cameo by PCGS. The close AM, a characteristic of business strike dies, was used on a small minority of proof dies in 1998, creating this sought-after variety. This is a perfect orange-red, thoroughly contrasted example showing absolutely no trace of carbon or other impairment. It was sold for $4,406.25. Number 9. Moving on with this 1995 D. Lincoln sent with double die obverse. Graded as MS-67 by PCGS. The motto, In God We Trust, is clearly doubled on this amazing superb gem. This piece has rich orange mint luster with noticeably stippled surfaces from die erosion, as struck. Scattered spots are consistent with the grade. Here is an incredibly important opportunity for those collectors seeking the finest available Lincoln scents. It was sold for $4,200. Number 8. This is 2010 D. Shield sent in MS-67 red condition. Due to the extraordinary planchet quality, it likely originated in a mint set. Lustrous and fully struck with seamless gold color aside from a minute reverse rim spot at 430. It was sold for $4,993.75. Number 9. 
Number 7. This is 1999 P. Connecticut quarter struck on an experimental planchet. Graded in Mint State 62 by PCGS. In 1999, the U.S. Mint tested manganese alloy planchets for the new golden Sacagawea dollar before dies for that design were available. Instead, 1999 P. State quarter dies, which had a similar diameter, were used to strike a limited number of experimental planchet pieces. Specimens are known for all five 1999 state designs, Delaware, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Georgia, Connecticut, and each is very rare. This is a caramel gold representative with hints of silver-blue toning. A lengthy, narrow line crosses Washington's bus truncation and is possibly as made, on the planchet prior to the strike. It was sold for $4,320. Number 6. Here is 2007 D. Lincoln cent struck on a steel washer. Graded in Mint State 64 by PCGS. Weight of this extraordinary error coin is 2.5 grams. He strike is perfectly centered, with full, squared rims. The central washer hole is reminiscent of the annular patterns of the 19th century. Dusky steel gray patina covers each side, while the devices are sharp. It was sold for $6,600. Number 5. This is 2002 D. Sacagawea dollar struck on a quarter planchet. Graded as MS-66 by NGC. A remarkable piece with brilliant light gray surfaces and exceptional luster. This error would be difficult to spot, due to the similar planchet size, although the color difference is unmistakable. It fetched a sum of $8,050 at auction. Number 4. Here is 2006 P. North Dakota State Quarter struck on a steel washer. Graded as MS-62 by PCGS. According to Heritage, there are not many magnetic U.S. quarters, but here is one. By 2006, the Mint Riddler system was well advanced, and it was highly unlikely for the present wrong planchet error to escape the smelter. This is an oval-shaped example with a slightly off-center hole, as made. The rim is present for portions of the left borders, while part of the right side design is off the flan due to its undersized host. This highly elusive error coin ended up selling for $8,625. Number 3. This is 2015 one ounce gold eagle with obverse indented by plastic fragment. Both coin and fragment included in the lot. The dark plastic fragment weights 1 gram, and is housed in the same two piece holder as the indented one ounce gold eagle. The kidney-shaped fragment is wafer-thin, and was struck into the gold coin above the Capitol building with a right jog over Liberty's torch, head, and chest. It was sold for $9,600. Number 2. This is 2000 P. Jefferson Nickel struck on a 1978 Lincoln cent. Graded as MS-64 red and brown by Annex. An error that presumably required some help, either from a mint worker or a mischievous mint visitor, since the cent host was struck 22 years before its nickel overstrike. The 1978 cent date is faint but legible near the back of Jefferson's head. A lustrous near gem with dusky gold and lilac red toning. It was sold for $12,075. Number 1. And here is 1993 D. Lincoln cent struck with dime reverse die. Graded in Mint State 65 Red by PCGS. A rare double denomination mule. U.S. coins struck with dies of different denominations are extremely rare. Until recent years, none were known. Aside from malfeasance of a mint worker, the mule denomination error is only possible when the denominations involved are similar in diameter. A cent is 19 mm, and a dime is 17.9 mm, a difference of 1.1 mm or approximately 5%. Given the billions of cents struck annually at the federal mints, it was inevitable that an absent-minded worker would pair cent and dime dies. Presumably, the mistake was discovered and the struck pieces were destroyed before dispersal, with the single exception of the present survivor. This lustrous gem shows the characteristics expected of a cent and dime mule. The dime side has a broad, tall rim, since metal was forced into the collar of the dime die by the wider diameter cent die opposite. As a result, the cent side has a soft strike near the rim, since metal in the vicinity flowed into the dime collar. The strike on the devices is normal. It was sold for $51,750. If you have any questions or want to share your own numismatic discoveries, please feel free to leave a comment below. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button below. God's will, until the next time.